take it away. All right. Um, okay, so good afternoon, guys. My name is uh, Derek. I'm joined by my colleague, Josh. Uh, both of us are from the WAN orchestration uh, team here in Cisco. Uh, today, we're talking about um, developing traffic-aware applications and basically using APIs for optimization and predictive analysis. Um, we'll be going to use uh, dCloud to show you some of the API calls and how we uh, kind of like exercise the APIs. Um, so Josh will take you through those demos later. I'll just give you a brief introduction of, of the WAN automation engine. So what is the WAN automation engine? Basically, um, there are three things that we do. First, we build a predictive model of the network. So looking at your topology and your traffic stats. And based on that, you know, coming up with a network model, which we then run um, the optimization algorithms again. So what if analysis, if this link fails, how will my traffic flow? If this node fails, how will my traffic flow? The other thing that we capture is because we have a, a network model, each network model that we have captured in time is basically what we call a snapshot. So based on each snapshot, we then build a time series data of uh, models of your network over time. And based on that snapshot or time series data, we can then do a lot of the analytical or historical analysis like trending, uh, utilization trends. And finally, um, with our model-based uh, configuration management, we, we kind of like expose this model that we have uh, developed internally through REST APIs. So developers, programmers could then use those REST APIs to kind of like interact with the model and kind of like ask the model, if I change this, what will happen? If I do this, what will happen? Where do we fit in terms of um, kind of like the whole controller strategy. I mean, there are a whole number of controllers available. And uh, you can see from the, from the CPE to the metro and access to the WAN and to the data center, Wave basically looks at the, the wide area network. right? And then uh, we very much play in terms of uh, in that area, in terms of uh, maybe like MPLS, uh, RSVPT, tunnel management. And the whole idea being that we would interface with uh, other software that may have uh, better visibility or better controls, for example, in the data center or in the metro and access areas. So just a quick overview of uh, the modules that uh, comprise our software. At the bottom there, you see a collector. Uh, we predominantly collect from uh, the networks using SNMP and, and CLI. Um, in order to enhance our model, sometimes we use BGPLS, we use NetFlow. But basically, with uh, SNMP and CLI, we, we can get almost 90% of, of, of an accurate model. Based on that um, collection statistics, we then build a network model. right? And, and we have what we call a current model, which is the, the working plan that we, that we use to then do simulations or, or make API calls on. And based on those simulations or API calls, we then build the future model, or what we, we call a, a new model, a future state of what we might think the network would want to be. We have a, a whole bunch of algorithms that we run. Uh, basically, um, we run the optimization predict prediction algorithms that uh, will tell us all the what-if analysis and failover scenarios. Uh, based on the time series data, of course, we keep uh, also the analytics of uh, the past history of your network so we can do some analytical kind of like uh, data gathering, um, data passing um, abilities. And then, of course, we also have bandwidth calendaring. So looking into the future and thinking about, OK, if, if we were to place this demand on your network in the future, can your current network state handle handles those the demands that we, that we plan to do? Finally, based on the optimized model that you come up with, you could then decide that you want to deploy that model back onto the network. So as a southbound interface, uh, we have PSAP as a protocol. We also have a template-based uh, configuration. And uh, upcoming in our upcoming release, we also use TLF as a means of uh, configuration southbound to, to the network devices. This slide just kind of summarizes um, in terms of the applications that, uh, that we have um, currently and are planning. So right now, we do have the offline design analysis tool uh, I mean, applications. Those come from historically the, the acquisition of Caridon into Cisco. So we, we do all these traffic engineering, traffic analysis through this offline tool. Uh, we also have the 
online real-time visualization, and that's our, our made live product. Uh, and of course, going into the future, we have a whole bunch of apps in development that we are looking at, for example, like segment routing, uh, tunnel, tunnel builder, tunnel splitter. So these are to be developed uh, accordingly using the REST APIs that, uh, that we expose from our platform. So just before we get into the, the actual dCloud demos, I just want to kind of highlight some of the key concepts in, in the WAN automation engine. The first thing is, when we build a model, we, the, that network, I mean, that model basically contains the topology, traffic, and state of the network in time, right? And traffic from a source to destination is represented as a demand. So when we say, when we talk about a demand, it's basically the traffic that we measured, and then when we run it through our model, we come up with the simulated traffic that should be there, and we call that a demand on, on the network. And you can identify the demands easily, basically, uh, I mean, you can, you can easily identify this by looking at how the traffic is routed based on your topology. So you know where the traffic will go under failure, and you know which parts of your network are, are affected by, by any of the failures. Uh, second key concept we want to talk about is um, this uh, failure analysis, right? So the simulation that we do in, in our algorithms, and you can see it's actually going through it uh, in this animation, is we fail each link or each node over time. And based on that failure, we then remodel the network and say, OK, what are the worst case scenarios? What are the normal utilization scenarios, right? And in terms of the failure sets, we could fail circuits, we could fail nodes, sites, uh, layer one links, layer one nodes, et cetera. And we could do compound failures also. So circuits and nodes, circuits and sites, or all circuit nodes and sites, right? And basically, based on that, we would then come up with a, with a kind of like a worst case and a failure impact uh, scenario for you, which is over here. So the worst case traffic shows you um, of all the different failure scenarios, a compounded view on the network. So you could look at, at one immediate view on the left-hand side, where are your congested links, like the red ones or the purple ones over here. The failure impact view shows you the link that, when it fails, causes the worst case somewhere else. So if you put both, both pictures together, you know that if I fail this link, this is the worst case scenario that I get. So this link failing in your network would cause this congestion over here. So they, they work in tandem, uh, but they're two different views. And, it, it, and um, when, when Josh uh, explains in the demo, you kind of get a better idea later on. Just understand that there's a worst case traffic view, and there's a failure impact view. OK, I'll hand it over to Josh. Uh, he's going to walk you through some of the dCloud stuff that we do. And dCloud basically is a demonstration cloud that uh, Cisco um, has available on, on the net. I mean, if any of you have a cisco.com ID, you could essentially log on to that dCloud platform, choose the, uh, the way demos, and carry, this, carry out these demos on your own and test basically the way platform. Thank you, Derek. Oh, and by the way, if you have tough questions later, I mean, Derek's the man. Um, so this is the, the Cisco uh, dCloud. Go to dcloud.cisco.com, log in with your Cisco credentials. And we have our uh, WAN automation demo under the service provider section. And you just schedule that for a time slot that you want. Uh, when your demo has been active, uh, after for about 20 minutes, then it's ready to go. And what you see is a page like this. And I have a viral network. I have the WAN automation engine. And I also have a remote desktop so I could access the demo applications that we have for WAY. Um, but in addition to this, there's also session details. And I can use my VPN. Oops. I can use my VPN client to just VPN into this directly. So I'm going to do that as, as the first step in my demo. So I go to my AnyConnect, and I type in the username and the password. And now I'm connected directly into this virtual session with the WAN automation engine and um, my topology. I don't know why this page looks funny. I need, probably need to refresh it. OK. So you're taken to a page like this called the WAN automation engine. These are our demo apps.
And we have a number of applications uh, that illustrate concepts of the WAN automation engine. But today what we're going to focus on is the APIs, the REST APIs, that these applications were built on. And so one of these, let me just open my Postman. I'll be using the Postman REST client to send a request to the WAN automation engine. And we'll take a look at that request and, and see and analyze the response. OK. So this API, can you guys see this OK, or do I need to enlarge this? All right. Let's see what I can do. Is that better at all? Or OK. All right, so this is my API call. And it, this is called a demand query node to node. Now what I'm going to ask the web automation engine is what happens if I add a demand between two nodes? Where will it go, and what will the impact be? But also, what's the impact if something were to fail in my network, um, and what that failure is? Uh, it, for this API, it's just an on-demand API. So we're looking at the current model. But we have a calendaring API, which, which looks at uh, existing uh, calendared requests on top of that model. Um, we're working towards uh, using that historical data as part of the calendaring module, but that's coming in a future release. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, it's kind of cool because we can we have all that historical data. We can generate a plan file that has the peak traffic amount for that period, and you can make your request on that and see the impact. So you're planning for your peak. So in this request, I just pick the source node. So I'll pick Seattle, and I'll pick Minnesota. I got these node names from my topology. Um, I, I know what they are from my dcloud demo. I can flip back here and take a look at my nodes again. Uh, so this is my topology up here on the left. And so I know that these are my node names, Seattle and Minnesota. And I specify an amount of bandwidth. And I send this request to my, to my dcloud instance of WAY. When I drag this up here, I see from the response, it tells me my source and destination node. It tells me my inbound and bandwidth, my service class. And what we're going to focus on is this no failure and this worst case utilization. Now, when Derek illustrated before, he said that we have a predictive model of way. And I'm going to use an offline client called Mate Design to show you what that looks like. And I'll keep this tab open so we can flip back forth and, and analyze the values that we got back. So I pull my file from Way. Assuming I have the right IP address. One second. And so this is what my network looks like. And just to show you offline, I made a demand request through the API that said, what happens if I add a demand between Seattle and Minnesota for five minutes? So Seattle and Minnesota for five minutes. And so our simulation added a demand like this to the model. And remember, the, the WAN automation engine is running on a server, and I'm showing you this offline. So it added a demand like this. And it said that the highest utilized interface was 59%. Right? And so I look back here at my request, and I see 59%. And that's that no failure utilization value. 
Now we also have worst case utilization value. And it says that if this circuit between Minnesota and Seattle fails, I'll have a worst case value of 66.9. So just to illustrate what that means, this circuit failure, and I sort by utilization again, and 66.9. Okay. And so that's that's what we mean by adding a predictive or making a predictive uh, analysis API call to the WAN automation engine. So how many of you attended our session yesterday? Nobody? Right? Okay, good. Um, so that means that uh, we can show you some of the cool stuff that we can do with the WAN automation engine. Uh, and it won't be uh, the same material that you already have seen. So I'd like to run through. I'd like to run through a few use cases here. This first one is segment routing with Way. And in this scenario, I'm going to get the model from Way again, and I'm going to run a tool that will give me the minimum number of SR tunnels needed uh, to lower an interface utilization, and I'll push that SR tunnel back to my WAN topology. So from here, I open my file from the WAN automation engine. Enter my username and password. And first, this is what my network looks like. But I'm going to show you that I have no LSPs in my network. It's currently just IGP traffic. And I'll show you on the router as well that I don't have any LSPs. This, this demo was also uh, recorded last week using a viral topology uh, just like this. OK, so I don't have any tunnels. Now what I'd like to do is lower the uh, utilization on this interface to something that's more acceptable. So that's 85%, so maybe I'll bring it everything below 80. And how many SR tunnels do I need to add to my network? So Way Design will do the computation, and it'll tell me that if I add an SR tunnel that follows this path, I move traffic on my network, and I can save this back to the WAN automation engine. Yeah, it's, SR is similar to um, MPLS. But I, I think Derek can probably explain the uh, uh Yeah. Sorry. So basically, um, initially, our, our optimization tool, we use uh, RSVP TE tunnels, the traditional MPLS-based tunnels. Um, but uh, in the newer uh, deployments, we are starting to use segment routing as well. So we do both optimization of uh, RSVP TE and segment routed tunnels. So if you are enterprise customer or, or service provider and you, you have an RSVPT network and you want to migrate to an SR network, I mean, you could do the modeling and the simulation first and then decide, yes, is this uh, a good idea to do the modeling and then push it down to the network. So effectively giving you a capability to, to visu visualize both RSVPT as well as segment routed tunnels on your network. Did that answer your question a little bit or? Okay. Oh, good, good. Yeah, keep them coming. Yeah. Like I said, Derek answers all the hard questions for me. Okay. And um, so we also have another uh, demo I'd like to show, which is multi-layer design. And so uh, we mentioned that the, the WAN automation engine can have a model of layer three networks. Uh, this is our layer one network in the same model. Right? And right now we're looking at the simulated traffic, but we can look at the worst case. And for layer one link failures, uh, one layer one link failure can cause a lot of damage on my network. To find out what that is, I can right click on an interface and I can say fail to worst case. And it'll point out the layer one link failure that caused these three layer three circuits to fall. 
So it was this, this link that failed that caused those three layer three circuits to go down. So the question is, what can we do to our network to make sure that we're not dropping packets in this case? So we have a tool called multi-layer design, which uh, we'll figure out how much capacity we need to add at layer three without changing the topologies of either layer, but just increasing the capacity of layer three such that we can support this amount of traffic. And so I'll run through the tool and I'll, I'll set it for layer one link failures as well, so it'll examine that. And what it's going to give me back is a, is a network that when I run some analysis again, I can see that I won't have nearly as much uh, packet drops at layer three. So I'm, I'm protected against any layer one link failure. So that's, that's before and this is after. And so we, ha we have another tool that I'm, I'm going to run through. It's called Network Cost Calculator, which will generate a bill of materials that will let you know where we added capacity and how much. So from the results here, I see I have um, a, a bunch of line cards here. And keep, keep an eye out on that line card one. I took a screenshot of this, and we'll compare the results before and after. OK, so I'm going to run through a second scenario, which is how can we change our layer three topology, uh, and can we save some money? So I, I tagged a few nodes in my topology and said, what happens if you add a circuit between these nodes, or these nodes, or these nodes? And so it'll run through those, those scenarios. I'll click OK. And we can see we added a new circuit between New York and Atlanta to bypass that middle area. And when I run the network cost calculator, we can compare uh, the difference between the two models the before and after, and we can, we can show you how uh, changing your topology at layer three can help you um, rather than just increasing capacity. And again, this is a, a CapEx calculator. So, uh, I like I said, I took a screenshot of the two side by side, and I'll show you the two scenarios here in a second. Um, and it just shows you the difference between them. We can see the number of line cards. And all that. So. Questions? Or? OK. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this, the, this main tool that I'm showing here is Way Design, and um, I worked at the, it was a company called Keratin, and before we got acquired by Cisco, I mean, we were selling this all the time, and uh, yeah, so this is a real product. The WAN Automation Engine is a real product in shipping. Um, we have our API documentation on DevNet. We have teams at Cisco building apps on top of them. Um, Okay, and let's see if I want to run through. Oh, we still, we're still doing pretty good on time. Um, the last one is, ah, okay. So when we talked about bandwidth calendaring before, this is an example of an application that somebody built using our Way REST APIs. And what they did was they, they implemented a, an application that talks to the business systems as well as the Win Automation Engine to uh, do bandwidth calendaring. And so the customer logs in, and they see only the sites that they're connected to. And they select their source and destination nodes. They specify their amount of bandwidth that they wish to purchase. And they specify the time interval, like when do they want their bandwidth to start, when do they want it to end. And the system will compute how much of that is peak 
peak time versus non-peak time. Specify the amount of latency. Or, or if they have resiliency constraints, they need to account for as well. So there's latency, and then if you scroll over, you see resiliency as well. And then you can generate a quote. But this is an example of an application that, that um, groups at Cisco uh, are building on top of the WAN automation engine, which is a, uh, the WAN automation is, is, is a shipping product. So I'm not going to go through the rest of this, but that's just an example of um, you know, how to place an order through this system. And all that. So I think the key message that uh, we wanted to talk about was, number one, how, how do I get started with the WAN automation engine? Which is, you go to dcloud.cisco.com. Oops. You, you can schedule a demo. You can jump into your demo. You can run through our sample applications. Uh, there's also a demo script in here that if you don't know exactly how to run through them, it's all provided. And also, we use AnyConnect to jump in, to jump into this session, to jump into this topology. And we can make API calls against it very easily. So as we, as we showed here, uh, this on-demand request, this predictive analysis um, is an example of that. A few things I forgot to point out about this API is latency information as well, uh, latency associated with your demand. That's similar to the utilization values. But otherwise, I think that that's the end of our presentation, and we're open to questions if you guys have any. So thank you very much.